this is 109 uh, section of this morning devotion and uh, we are taking our hymn from hymn number 15 all people that are here to dwell all people that on earth do dwell sing to the lord with cheerful voice himself with fear his breath for terror come ye before him and rejoice know that the lord is god indeed Without our Eddie did us make, we are his flock, he doth us feed, and for his sheep he doth us take. Oh, enter then his gates with praise, approach with joy his cause unto. Praise loud and bless his name always, for it is simply so to do. For why the Lord our God is good, his mercy is forever sure, his truth at all times firmly stood, and shall from age to age. And I want us to come before the Lord this morning to appreciate Him for the privilege of seeing a new month, the month of September. There are some that uh, saw 31st, even 31st of uh, August, but uh, before they could hit this uh, 1st of September, they have gone into history but God has uh, preserved you and preserved me even till this uh, September first so we want to thank the Almighty Father who has brought us to a new moon with uh, promises of uh, uh, things that we do being so great that uh, the remaining four months will be months to be remembered. Blessed Redeemer, we thank you this morning because you are God the Almighty. We appreciate you so much because of how you carried us through the first month, January, to this uh, uh, last month of August, uh, this last month, August. And now we have entered a new month, beginning today. Blessed Father, our, our assurance, our hope, and uh, our strength is uh, based on nothing else than Jesus Christ and His Word, His righteousness. Our hope is in God who made the heavens and earth. And our trust is that our Father is stronger than all. And nobody is able to pluck us out of His hand. And so, Father, we come this morning to recommit our lives and uh, everything, our families, our children, and uh, our businesses, and our vision, and our pursuit and goals in life. Father, we entrust them back to you. We know that you are the only best hand that will be able to sustain and to keep us through to this month. Father, everything about this month is known to you. The dangers that the devil has lined up, you know all of them. My father, the traps he has set here and there, you know all of them. And uh, our joy is that you are God. You catch the crafty in their craftiness and you do not allow the hands to perform the enterprise. We are trusting the Almighty Father that your hand will navigate us. Your hand will keep us. Your hand will preserve us. Blessed Father, you have elected to preserve us. And we too also have elected to continue to trust in you. Necessity to keep us, necessity to preserve us, necessity to keep our families and our children, necessity to protect us, eternal Father lies with you. Why the necessity to serve us, Great Father, is lying with us. Therefore, this morning, Great Father, have your way as we listen to the instruction you have for us today, the beginning of the month, as the Spirit of the Living God will guide and direct us. 
Thank you, Father, for answer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Now let's go to Genesis chapter 22 and we read from verse 10 to 18. The theme of the morning discourse is divine multiplication or divine increase. Divine multiplication or increase. In Genesis chapter 22, we read from verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. Because from verse 1, God has asked him to go and sacrifice his only son. And then, which he did. And uh, he woke up and took his son and took his servants. And they came to a point where he had to ask his servants to stay behind. So that he can go with the lad. Now listen to me. There is a point in life you get to and then you need to excuse yourself from the multitude, from the crowd to do what God will have you to do. He knew that if he had gone with the crowd, if he had gone with his servants, his servants would have prevented him from doing the right thing. So he had to ask them to wait so that uh, he can move on. So there are points we get to in life. We need to excuse ourselves from the crowd, from the opinion of the crowd, from what men we think, from what men are saying, in order to do the correct and exact will of God. Sometimes human beings around, crowds around, can lead to losing the vision and doing the exact thing that God will have you to do. Abraham knew this, and so as a result of that, he had to excuse himself from those people and ask them to stay behind. The same thing equally happened in Elijah's life. At a point he needed to ask his servant, one of the servants, to stay behind while he go yonder. And uh, that was the end of that young man. So in Genesis chapter 22, we read verse 11 now. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here yeah, am I. He said, lay not your hand upon the lad. Neither do thou anything unto him for now. I know that you fearest God. And seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to his, this day, in the uh, mount of the Lord it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time, and said, uh, By myself have I sworn, says the Lord, for because thou hast uh, done this thing, and hast not withheld thy, son, my, thy only son, thy in blessing I will bless thee. And in multiplying, I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven. And as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast opened, thou hast obeyed my voice. A number of uh, things uh, were decided in favor of uh, Abraham as uh, by reason of uh, the, his uh, total and complete submission to God in the matter of uh, offering Isaac. Uh, number one, um, verse 16, he said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and has not withheld your son, thy only son, that in blessing I will bless thee. That's one. Two, in multiplying, that is increasing the blessing. I will multiply your seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore. And number three, and thy seed shall possess the gate of uh, his enemies. That's the next blessing. And then the next, in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. You will see the list of blessings that uh, obedient to his voice uh, uh, brought. So, we are dealing with divine multiplication, divine increase, 
divine growth. God Almighty promises that his church to increase. Paul said, I planted Apollos watered. God gave increase. God is in the business of increasing his people. And in Psalm chapter 84, 6 and 7, God stated his mind here through the psalmist. Verse 6, who passing through the valley of Baca, make it a well, the rain also fill the pools. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. They go from strength to strength. That is an increase. That is multiplication. That is a improvement. In Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 18. We are stating God's mind in the matter of your multiplication, in the matter of your increase. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow, multiply. God wants you to grow. To Him be glory both now and forever and ever. Amen. And so, right away from the beginning of creation of man, multiplication has been in God's original plan of the blessings He first gave to man. And... Uh, we can see that in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, the announcement that God gave when he was about to create man showed his mind. And what he did in the days of Noah, after Noah had obeyed him and his family saved, and then I came back and made offering, all of them are pointers to this mind of God toward man, which he pronounced upon the first man. Genesis 1, 26, God said, let us make man in our own image, after our own likeness. And then he stated what this man should experience. One, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. God wants you to have dominion. That is in the original blueprint for man. And over the fowl of the uh, air, over all the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. The image of God created he, him, male and female, created he them. Verse 28, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. Number one, two, multiply. Three, replenish the earth. For subdue it. Five, have dominion. Can you see this is the first five commandments or instruction God gave man. Number one, be fruitful. So the original plan of God for you is fruitfulness, followed by increase, multiplication, followed by replenishing, taking over and the overcoming and the ruling and subduing everything around that these are the express provision and pronouncement of god for upon man chapter 9 of uh, of uh, genesis verse 1 and god blessed noah and his sons and said unto them be fruitful again, multiply, and replenish the earth. That is uh, the pronouncement of God to man in the matter of, uh, of uh, increase. Now, chapter 8 of Genesis and verse 17. And bring forth with thee every living thing that is with thee of all flesh, both of fowl, of cattle, of every creeping thing, that creepeth upon the earth, and that they may breed, that they may breed abundantly in the earth, and be fruitful, and multiply upon the earth. Noah was asked to bring out all of those animals, you, you, you saved their lives, and then put them on the earth, so that they can multiply, and breed abundantly. So, God here was expressing, even his mind, towards man. In chapter 16 of Genesis, we can verse 10. 
Genesis 16 and verse 10. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply you as seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. If that continues in Genesis chapter 17 verse 2, I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. God speaking to Abraham, that he will multiply his seed. And then that continued. So, in verse 20 of the same Genesis chapter 17, And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee, behold, I have blessed him, and will make him fruitful, and will multiply him exceeding. Twelve princes shall be God, he be God, and I will make him a great nation. These are the promises of God in the matter of multiplication. So, God is strongly behind the matter of uh, multiplication. Now, we can see further in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 6, let us read verse 14. Verse 14 of Hebrews and uh, chapter 6. Saying, surely, God talking to Abraham, Blessing, I will bless thee, and multiplying, I will multiply thee. So you can see God talking about multiplying and multiplying. So, God's mind, God's plan on the issue of your increase as a person, your growth, spiritual growth, financial growth, material growth, and uh, multiplication is not in question in any way with all the scriptures we have read it is not an issue of discussion or an issue that is in uh, somebody will be doubting now paul said i planted apollos watered god gave increase god multiplied so the issue of divine multiplication is uh, is feed the pages of the Bible. God said he will multiply. And then a man speaking about God, presenting the picture of God that has the capacity to multiply. Chapter 3 of First Corinthians 6 and 7. I planted Apollos water, but God gave the increase. I planted Apollos water, God gave the increase. So then neither is he that planted anything. Neither he that watereth, but God that giveth the increase. So God is a God who gives increase. God is a God who multiplies. God is a God of multiplication. A God of growth. God of progress. You have no reason not to progress. Second Corinthians 9 and verse 7. Every man according as he proposed in his heart, so let him give no grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth cheerful uh, givers. God is a lover of cheerful givers. And then verse 8, and God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. God is able to increase. Verse 10, now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. It is God that causes what we sow to increase and to multiply. So, it is very clear that the God we are serving and we are relating with is a God who takes desire and interest in our multiplication, our increase. Chapter 4 of Ephesians verse 10. He that descended is the same also as he that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. He might feel all things. God is a God who is interested in his people feeling all things. That is God interested in the feeling of his people in every area so multiplication 
or increase, divine multiplication or increase is influenced by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a great influencer of multiplication. Now, in As of Apostle, let us prove that the Holy Spirit influences multiplication. As chapter 6, and we read verse 5. And the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch, whom they said before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem. Greatly and a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. There was the increase multiplication because the word of God increased. So the word of God and the Holy Spirit, they are behind the word of God, the Holy Spirit, both of them are behind great increase, great multiplication. Look at uh, Chapter 7 of Acts of Apostles and verse 17. But when the time of the promise drew near, which God has won to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. The promise of God, the word of God about the, the, the people growing, multiplied. It was the word of God which he spoke on the head of Abraham that caused their multiplication, even in the midst of oppression. Chapter 9 of verse of Apostle 31. Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were defied and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the Holy Ghost, the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. They walking in the fear of God and comfort of the Holy Ghost brought multiplication. Chapter 12 and verse 24 of Acts of Apostles. But the word of God grew and multiplied. The word grew and it brought multiplication of their faith. Their faith grew and the, the, the ability to receive from God improved. So it is interesting to know that increase, multiplication, growth, fruitfulness, they happen through the increase of the word of God. When the word of God increases, it there, there, there will be multiplication. And when the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life increases, there will be multiplication, as we have seen in Acts of Apostles, chapter 6, 6 and 7, and chapter 9, 31. So when God is involved, in a life, when somebody allows God to have his way in one's life, you find that no Satan will be able to manipulate or to stop the increase that God has destined to happen in the person's life. Now, the manipulation of the Pharaoh that did not know God couldn't stop the increase of the children of Israel. So, there is no policy it is not today that uh, policies have been, been raised against uh, the God's, God's program. In the days of Daniel, they signed policy, policy against Daniel. But the people who signed those policies died because of approving policy against praying. So, it's not today people have been, uh, been working against God, but we see in all that they couldn't survive. Nobody that has ever fought God has kept death and judgment. Now Exodus chapter 1 and verse 7. And the children of Israel were fruitful and increased abundantly and multiplied and was exceeding mighty and the land was filled with them. Now that was what was going on. And verse 10. Come on, let's deal wisely with them. Let them multiply and it come to pass. And so they now put up a plan to stop their multiplication. But then, verse 12, but the more they afflict them, the more they multiplied and grew because 
multiplication was in the increase of God's plan for them. So let nobody deceive himself. Let nobody kill himself. Those who try to fight God, I will uh, die. Because God will not fold his hand and see any human being mortal to stop him. Verse 20. Therefore God dealt well with the midwives and the people multiplied and works very mighty in spite of the obnoxious policy, deadly policy, satanic policy of uh, the Pharaoh that didn't know God. We may have Pharaohs and people who don't know God around us in government. It is not today that uh, we have been having such people. It is not today that God's, God has been having such people. They have not been able to uh, stop the program of God. And so, now, the issue of uh, uh, divine increase does not know any bound. It is all encompassing. When God decides to, to, to increase you, the increase will affect every area of life. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 13. Deuteronomy chapter 8, and let us read verse 13 of Deuteronomy. Chapter 8. And when the heads and thy flock, when thy heads and thy flock multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied. Can you see multiplication of heads and flocks? Multiplication of silver and gold? Multiplication of all that you have. So, the mind of God and the will of God and the desire of God is that all you have should experience multiplication. Look at Joshua chapter 2, 2, 4, 24, 1 and 3. And Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, Your father dwelling on the other side of the flood, in our time, in your time, even the, the terror of Abraham, and uh, uh, terror, the father of Abraham, and the father of Nacho, and the son of the gods. And I took your father Abraham from the other side of the flood, and led him through all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed. And gave him Isaac. Of course, the multiplication took place. He needed to be taken to the other side. He needed to take, be taken to the other side of the flood. Which side are you? Now, you were talking about increase in life. Increase in life is all encompassing. It will affect every area of your life. But before God increased Abraham, Abraham took a step out of a his uh, land of nativity, he, there was a forsaking of uh, the lifestyle of the people around him. He forsook their lifestyle and then was willing to follow God and to allow God to tell him what to do and what not to do. Psalm 107 and verse 38, he blessed them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffer not their cattle to decrease. That is a God multiplying the people of Israel. We see the multiplication in Genesis. We see the multiplication in Deuteronomy. Let's look at Deuteronomy again. And chapter 28 verse 63. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 63. So God is interested in your increase. God is interested in your progress. God is interested in your multiplication. In chapter 60, uh, uh, 28 of uh, Deuteronomy and verse 63. It shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and you shall be plucked from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. The point is that God rejoices in multiplying his people as they obey his word, as they follow his instruction. He takes pleasure in their multiplication. That is what God does. Chapter 30 of Deuteronomy, 
and um, let's read verse 5 and verse 16. And the Lord your God will bring thee into the land which your fathers possess, and thou shalt possess it, and it will do you good and multiply thee above your fathers. And verse 16. In that I command thee this day to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandment, his statutes and his judgment, that thou mayest live and multiply. And the Lord your God shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. Keeping the commandment of God is important in bringing people into multiplication. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. There are many people that they want a multiplication. They want to enjoy some divine provision in the Bible, but they do not care about uh, the path to enjoying the divine provision. There is always a pathway to enjoying what is promised. And until you take the path to that, you will be making claim and claim. That's why we see many things you have claimed, you have not yet received them because you are yet to to the path. Jeremiah 30 and verse 19. And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. They shall not be few. I will also glorify them, and they shall not be small. So, this is the promise of God. We can enjoy numerical multiplication, even in the church. We can enjoy increase of numbers. We can enjoy financial multiplication. We can enjoy multiplication of membership in the church. Church, we can enjoy multiplication in all things as we have read in the Word of God. So, how is divine multiplication and increase attracted? How do we attract this? That comes through sacrificial living and sacrificial giving and faith giving and sowing. Now, the blessing of multiplying, uh, multiplying Noah, Noah being asked that he be multiplied and replenish came as, uh, he, sub, as uh, he brought those offerings to the Lord and God smelled the sweet savour. And when God smelled the offering, God requested that uh, Noah should, uh, okay, he began to pour his blessing upon Noah. And so, we find also that Abraham through sacrifice, to come total yieldedness to the ways of God and demands of God. He got into the blessing. The same way also Isaac his son, total through total surrenderedness, he also experienced multiplication that affected every area of his life. God said to Abraham, Because you have done this, uh, this is what I will do. So if you want God to do anything for you, look at what God wants you to do and go and do them. Look at what people that uh, enjoyed what you're asking God to do for you, what they did before to enjoy it and go and do thou likewise. Jesus Christ said, go and do thou likewise. As you do what and I do what the people of old did and got results, surely we will get results. So increase in the ministry uh, comes through through rest through re returning to the word of God, uh, yes, and uh, through increase in sowing the word and sowing prayer. In Acts of Apostle chapter six, the people return to the word of God, and the word of God increased. And the number of disciples multiplied. When you take the word of God, that is how you get increase of faith. When you pray and present the word of God daily before God, you increase the miracles you receive. And so increase in the length of days, longevity, uh, comes through walking in total submission to the word of God as stated in Deuteronomy chapter 32 45 to 47 if you read it you will see that when we walk by the word of God we 
open ourselves to great increase of God's blessings. In Job 29 and verse 18, chapter 29 of Job and verse 18, then I said, I shall die in my nest, and I shall multiply my days as the sand. Multiplying days as sand is possible. But that is as we submit totally to the word of God, to the will of God, and live a life. A, a life according to God's instruction. Being diligent. These are days of uh, rough Christianity. You see Christians, they speak rough words to one another, rough language to one another. You see Christianity uh, is like uh, when Christians gather and they are discussing. It is like uh, you, you, I mean, the, the house of assembly, house of commotion. In Ezekiel 36, 10 and 11, And I will multiply men upon you, all the house of Israel, even all of it. And the cities shall be inhabited, and the west shall be builded. I will multiply upon you man and beast, and they shall increase and bring fruit. I will settle with you uh, after of oh, I will settle you after your old estate, and I will do better unto you than at your beginnings, and you shall know that I am the Lord. I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And you shall know that I am the Lord. This is the promise of God. And verse 30. I will multiply the fruit of the tree and the increase of the field. That ye shall receive no more reproach of famine among the hidden. But something will lead to that. If you read verse 24 and 25. First of all, they have to be sprinkled. First of all, they have to turn away from iniquity and from sin. Before they can enjoy this. So... Please let it be clear to every one of us, every blessing of God of any kind can only be enjoyed when people follow the instructions of God. Ezekiel 37 and verse 20. And uh, uh, the six whereon thou writest shall be in thy hand before thy eyes. Verse 26. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. I will place them and multiply them. Placing them and multiplying them and setting my sanctuary. These are important. When God has placed your life, you have where you're supposed to be. When you have entered a covenant of a peace with God through Jesus, you are now set for a life that is productive. So, when we sow our life, our money, our treasures to the work of God, it will bring revival and we bring restoration, and also we multiply through wise labor. Proverbs 13 verse 11. That's the last. We will read and we will call upon God. Proverbs 13 verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Wealth gotten by, um, by vanity shall diminish, but the person who labors with his hand, wise labor, careful labor, and uh, is very careful about uh, about uh, about uh, corrupt things, about uh, polluted things, about taking what does not belong to him. Such a person is promised by God as long as he labors that uh, his labor will will uh, bring increase. In all labor, there is uh, a reward. But the talk of their mouth tends to penury. And so we are going to pray for the Lord. We are going to pray for grace to live a sacrificial life. That is the first prayer point we are going to present before God. We have heard the truth here about multiplication. And the first thing we are told is that we need to be people that are willing to be sacrificial if we want 
the multiplication and we need to return to the word of God and uh, allow the spirit of God to operate in our lives. Father, we thank you this morning. Once again, we appreciate your grace, we appreciate your mercy and love and care and concern and everything that you have done. Thank you very much for who you are and thank you for helping us. Thank you for teaching us that we can multiply. This morning, everlasting Father, we yield ourselves totally to the Lord. It is very clear and not in doubt. You are concerned from outset, from the beginning of creation. You are interested that we should have dominion. You have shown great interest that we should subdue. You have shown great interest that we should multiply, increase and replenish. This is your interest. This is your concern. And it was a commandment. Therefore, blessed Father, when Adam and Eve went into sin and then and the whole world filled with sin and that first world was taken out of the way and you have to start with Noah the same instruction and commandment was given to Noah eternal father in heaven we thank you because of your mercy that uh, is uh, showing that this this multiplication can be possible in all area in everything about our life we can increase we, they go from strength to strength, every one of them appear in Zion. It is a will, great Father, that we should grow, we should multiply, we should be fruitful. I pray, great Father in heaven, that the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of growth, the grace of God, that enables people, my Father, to improve spiritually, improve materially, improve financially, improve in all ramification. Great Father, let the Spirit be poured upon us. Let the grace be received and released into our lives. Thank you, our Father, for answer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to pray for God's protection, God's provision, God's supervision. For this month of September, let us pray. Great Father in heaven, we come this morning, O God of September, we do not trust in our own strength. Blessed Father, because by strength shall no man prevail. Our hope is in the Lord who made the heavens and earth. He is our rock of ages. He is the rock that is holding us. I hold not the rock, but the rock holds me. I want to present Lord in glory the members of this house of God, the Washman Catholic Charismatic Renewal Movement. All the people that are praying with me, blessed Father, all the people, great Father, group people, the groups that are connected to this morning prayer, blessed Father, I pray for them and their family and I pray for all of those groups, everlasting Father in heaven. I pray that in this month of September, oh God in heaven, you know things that are, that are, Usually, evils that are usually associated with September, that is when the forces of darkness will begin to manipulate drivers so that they begin to drive recklessly, thereby shedding innocent blood and destroying and killing many people. But, eternal Father in heaven, we plead the blood of Jesus, O oh God. We sprinkle the blood of Jesus all over the nations and all over the roads all the places and beyond this nation connecting to all the people that are praying with us we're asking the almighty father that your grace your strength your wisdom your hand your mercy be released into our lives thank you we are trusting lord that we shall enjoy your protection we shall enjoy your provision we shall enjoy your supervision we shall enjoy your, your everything. We shall experience fruitfulness, productivity, multiplication, and every good thing that God Almighty has planned for us. We shall have them this month in the name of Jesus. Father, we also ask for wisdom to labor wisely. We need the wisdom of God to labor. 
We need the mercy of God to labor. Therefore, great Father, let your hand rest upon us so that as we labor this month, we want to see the fruit of our labor. We want to see the multiplication as God has ordained. Thank you, our Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray for the prosperity of whatever you will lay your hands this month. Whatsoever you lay hands this month, want to see multiplication, want to see prosperity, want to see progress of that. Uh, Father, we thank you this morning because you are interested in the prosperity of the righteous. You are the one who said we should be the head and not the tail. Your word said they go from strength to strength, every one of them, they come to Zion. You are the one that commanded that man should prosper. Man should increase, multiply, subdue, replenish. This is your commandment. Therefore, great Father, we are asking you, O God, from this month of September, whatsoever we put our hands upon, cause it to progress, cause it to multiply, cause it to increase. Paul said, I planted Apollos water, God gave increase. He that planted is nothing. He that watered is nothing. But God that gave it increase. Therefore, blessed Father, our labor and effort will be wasted without your support, without you giving increase. My Father and my God, therefore I ask you this morning, O oh God, Command the increase of our labors. Command the increase of the work of our hands. Command the productivity in our lives, both spiritually, financially, materially, intellectually, numerically. We want to see the move of God, fresh move of God, as we enter the last quarter of the year. Thank you, blessed Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to pray for spiritual, uh, numerical, and uh, otherwise multiplication. Again, we're going to ask God to remove and take out of the way every obstacle to progress. The word of God is clear in Proverbs 25 and verse 4. Proverbs 25 verse 4. Hear what God says. And we're going to pray on this point. Take away the dross from the silver, and there shall come forth a vessel for the finer. Take away the wicked from before the king, and his throne shall be established in righteousness. Let us ask God to take away the obstacle, take away the hindrances to progress, to multiplication, to increase numerical, spiritual, material, financial. Everlasting Father, we come this morning, and we are asking the Lord of glory, we are trusting in your mercy, O oh God. Whatever be the obstacle, spiritual obstacle, my Father, and physical obstacle, to making progress, to in finances, there are people, blessed Father, that are in financial shambles. Materially, they are, there is, they are, a, they are a right off, my Father, and uh, there is a uh, no increase. No multiplication. Instead, they are going round and round and round. Blessed Father, but I come this morning because you are God of increase from every angle. You've proven that you have a very strong interest in the increase of your people. Therefore, Father, this morning, I ask the Spirit of the living God, who said they go from strength to strength, and every one of them appeared in Zion. Father, breathe increase into what we are doing so that we can experience exponential multiplication in all things. Thank you, our Father, for answer. We give you thanks and praise and glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to pray for everyone in your family to grow and to increase both in grace, in knowledge, and in spiritual matters. Let us pray. Father, this morning I present everybody in my house, O oh God, beginning from my wife and all my children. 
I bring them all before the Lord of glory that is seated on the throne, the Almighty Father that rules the affairs of men, and he does what pleases him, and no man can ask him what the worst thou. As I come before you this morning, Father, I'm trusting, O oh God, that this matter of increase in knowledge, in grace, in wisdom, and spiritually, material things, great Father, I want to ask Lord, begin this increase with my family, and let also families of our pastors, and the women coordinators, and all workers, and everybody that is in this movement, Father, in this diocese, and beyond this diocese, and all the people, blessed Father, that are part of this prayer, great Father, I ask you, O oh Lord, that uh, you begin to breathe increase into what we are doing. Father, let your commandment begin to hold. Let your commandment begin to de destroy every obstacle on the way. Father, ask the Holy Spirit to provide for all of us, great Father, enabling an environment, Father, necessary, God Almighty, for multiplication, for growth numerically for growth spiritually, for growth financially. Father, you know that many, many people are struggling with their finances and it is not going well with them. Many, many of the people, blessed Father, are downcast in the spirit because things are not working. But we are trusting the Almighty Father, the God of the spirit of all flesh, for his intervention. And surely he will intervene. We thank you this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, let us uh, hand over to the, this first day of September into the hand of the Lord and ask him to take us out and bring us back and multiply his blessings upon our lives. Our God and our Father, we thank you this morning. We are trusting that you are taking us out and uh, anytime you take your people out, surely, great Father, your word will be fulfilled. We go out and come back blessed. Let the blessings that you have kept out there for us open our eyes and guide our steps, direct our feet into these blessings. Thank you, our Father. We are trusting the Almighty Father that in this month of September, Great Father, you will do things that are marvelous, things that will make the month of September to be remembered Things that will make the month of October to be remembered. November to be remembered. December to be remembered. Blessed Father, we are trusting that these four months remaining will be months of recovery, months of restoration, months of, uh, of a sevenfold restoration, months of uh, accelerated blessing. And we ask the Holy Spirit to accelerate the move of God, accelerate the blessings of God. As I read the open door, make things to happen with speed, in speed and in sequences. Thank you, Great Father. We are trusting the Lord of glory that uh, He will show forth. Lu aswa dedi kri ato malapanya. Raise my shendum of entulusuasi i kri alo matena lismi i. Asu suludu na dena, ma kumpreto fa. Lord in glory. Have your way. Thank you in Jesus' name. Let the name of the Lord be glorified, highly glorified, highly exalted. As we look forward to the great visitations for this month, as we praise you and we will look forward for your great visitation, we shall have testimonies upon testimonies. We shall experience mother of testimonies without fear. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's take this hymn 54, higher ground. As usual, stanza one and stanza two. I'm pressing on the upward way, new item girl, in every day, still praying as I am world bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven table land. I plan 
Then I have found, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where thou shalt rise. And fear this man, though some men well, where these are bound. My prayer, my end, is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven table land. Higher plan than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Good morning and God bless you.